Right, 98% state of charge. Haven't done any preconditioning or anything. Just gonna leave it to its own devices today and we will hit the road to Ohio for another road trip. Hey, and welcome back to Plug and Play EV and another quick road trip. This one, our familiar route over to Ohio, Cleveland, Metro West, to be precise, from Boston. So around 1,200, 1,300 miles. And uh, one we're pretty familiar with at this point, but still has a lot of takeaways as the route changes pretty much every time we go. So this one was a super quick weekend break. So leaving on a Friday afternoon, back on a Sunday evening. So, and I think this is how we'll try and do uh, road trips, or at least some of the, the longer trips that we do from now on looking at the overall trip quickly doing a road trip report kind of thing and then looking at some of the takeaways and just cutting in footage from the trip um, and then the intention to do the full trip a longer piece that kind of looks at each stop in detail goes into the charging costs the amount we added the starting state of charge and state of charge all that good stuff hopefully that's what works going into the new year we'll see but for this one this is the road trip report from boston to cleveland ohio and back again in a weekend let's go So one starting thing to note was obviously we're now into the colder months. It's not winter yet. It's not cold enough where I think we can really truly say that it's a, a proper cold weather test of the Ionic 5. Um, but it was freezing temperatures in some parts. So we did get to look at the battery temperature, impact on fast charging, all that kind of stuff. And then just the reliability of charging. How did the uh, stations that we chose hold up? Was it busy? Did they have any offline? All that stuff that kind of comes into travel that a lot of people seem to think is a major problem um, and we'll look at how we fared on this trip. So I guess we'll jump right into uh, Electrify America reliability. So, you know, long story short, we completely used Electrify America on this uh, this trip. It was a couple of sites that were Evolve New York, Electrify America combination sites, but essentially the same. You're using the Electrify America backend. It's in the Electrify America app. So you're pretty much hitting the same thing. And in the Ionic 5, we have the 30 minutes free charging. So the pricing isn't that much different either. A note on the pricing, I won't really focus it on this uh, in this video so much because it really doesn't uh, come out with the Ionic 5 charging plan. You get uh, 30 minutes free, so you really don't see anything. After that, it does bill at an Electrify America uh, standard rate, so there's sometimes we'll go over, and that does come into the charging uh, in cold weather because you then tend to go a little bit longer, but really doesn't matter for us in this. You can kind of work it out. We'll have the number of kilowatt hours that we used at the end of the video, so times that out by whatever you pay on Electrify America in your area, and you can kind of figure that out on this route it's because uh the equipment along the way let's say for evgo is almost always 50 kilowatts that just doesn't compare to 150 or 350 kilowatt capable stations so we don't use them uh, in the case of uh, evolve new york's other sites with shell recharge uh, it's a little better they do have uh, the same kind of capabilities 150 kilowatt and 350 kilowatt as uh, the Electrify America sites, but they tend to be, some of them are in places we would go, some of them are downtown, which is uh, can be useful, but this being a speed kind of run across the state, didn't really want to spend a whole lot of time uh, going into town centers, that kind of thing. Um, and it just didn't end up working out that those were the places we wanted to stop in the end. So of those eight stops, uh, the first one was in Albany, New York, and uh, we also had one in Buffalo, New York, in Cheektowaga, both of which were uh, upgraded stations. Um, we've done this before and we did stop on the way back at uh, Chicopee, Massachusetts, the first Electrify America site that was in the ground back in 2018, and uh, one of the ones that's been upgraded recently here in the uh, late September, early October kind of time. have to say, all those were really good. Didn't get any problems with them. Uh, the only kind of sticking point, if you like, at the Albany site was that it was so popular that we had uh, six EVs in the six stalls charging when we arrived. Uh, one quickly pulled out, but then there was another Ionic 5 waiting, so he pulled in, and we waited maybe three minutes it's there for the uh, ID4 that you'll see on the screen here. And then we got in and got our charge. So that was uh, really nothing to do with Electrify America. Albany is a pretty good place for EV Go as well. But as I say, those are all 50 kilowatt stations. There's one that's just gone in to the east of Albany, which does actually have 350 kilowatt stations. So at some point we'll probably be looking to use that. But again, this was the one that kind of hit that first uh, criteria of being a good place to stop three hours in, getting a snack at the Panera Bread that's there and has a lot around it. 
it so you can see why it's popular but again congestion the thing there this is what we've always said over the you know even dating back to last year traveling in the bolt starting to see more uh, id4s and mark e's using these stations and now with ev6s and uh hyundai ionic 5s on the uh complementary charging plan in the case of the ionic 5 more and more use of these stations um by both you know travelers as we were and locals who are doing their shopping groceries filled up christmas shopping whatever it is uh, these new stations seem to be uh starting off life pretty pretty well in our experience um so can't really fault it we were on quickly uh the cars were charging relatively fast we saw a bunch of people leave and some others pull in so popular station albany good equipment uh, that was holding up to the initial tests of having opened up and a lot of usage in those first weeks Beyond that, as I say, uh, we had stops in Buffalo on the way there and uh, Chicopee on the way back. Both of those stations worked fine. They weren't so busy, so there was no real uh, proof of stress on those. But, uh, you know, recently opening up and uh, the equipment seems to be holding up as far as plug share ratings go. Uh, some of the older stations along the way, um, down in Erie, Pennsylvania, most notably. Um, also, again, you know, it's, uh, it's an older site. It's uh, looking a bit kind of more beaten up, but that worked for us. Those things on the hardware side, all were good and it was getting busy there especially at the lunchtime uh, session so again even the older sites still holding up didn't have too many problems there the one call out would be the uh, software side, uh, Erie specifically, maybe it was that uh, particular location, but on the charging, we had a perfectly fine session, no problems at all. But then our session was still active in the app, even though we'd stopped charging. So now again, no extra billing, no real big deal here, but it did require reporting that to Electrify America and getting that cleared out. But that was the one kind of software side hitch, if you like, that was uh, not inconvenient, just kind of something that uh, you might need to be aware of. Advisor on the phone, had said that you can use the NFC uh, on your phone and app to start a session without needing to swipe to start. Obviously, the deal there is that if you are locked into a session, it still thinks you're charging, even though your vehicle's unplugged and you've been gone a long time ago. You can't then start another session because it thinks that you're in the process of charging already. So that does hang it up a little bit and mean you have to get that cleared out of the system. And also on the software side, we continue to see occasional stations with these free charging, um, just plug in and go. Um, um, to the extent that that's free Venn mode and just a uh, default scenario when uh, there may be connectivity issues, that's fine. But again, it raises longer term questions of Electrify America needs to make money at some point and continuing to dole out free charging, whether it's by these complementary programs or just because the charger is down and can't connect to the mothership. All of that stuff raises questions about can they make money in the long term did have eight sessions as i say um the only one that was a problem was our old friend herkimer plenty of tales from that site um although it has been improved in recent years um pulling in there did have another ionic 5 charging on station 2 uh station 4 was dark station 3 was lit up um but the ionic 5 driver told us that that wasn't working and hadn't connected for him we tried it exactly right uh didn't start a charge just showed the buffering screen so effectively at that place uh, assuming that those two charges were both out of commission you're down to 50% availability, uh, one of them being the Chadamo and CCS uh, combo station, which is at least that's still up. But again, we didn't try the Charger 1, so we didn't know if that was for sure online. Charger 2 did work, we got a session in, no problem. But if you're talking about the uh, utilization of that station, if there were a lot of people trying to charge there, that would have been a severe bottleneck. And then in terms of congestion, the biggest delay we had was in Victor, New York, where we hit the Evolve New York uh, Electrify America station, which is it does have four stalls, but it's in quite a handy area off the interstate, a couple of different interstates and serving Rochester. It's also a retail outlet, so there's a lot around there, a bunch of different shops and dining that you could go to, and it does tend to get busy. I've had some light stops there, but more often than not, there's two, three EVs charging. This time there were four. It seemed to be a Hyundai Kona Electric on uh, Charger 1 going all the way to the top of his pack. By the time we left, after about 30, 35 minutes, he was still uh, 60, 70 minutes into his session and still going well up into the 90s. So again, you see that kind of, uh, you know, staying for these longer uh, sessions, we've done it as well ourselves. In the scenario that we had, it wasn't that urgent. You know, we had an Ionic 5 charging just in front of us. He finished up about five, 10 minutes. We were back on the charger, ready to uh, roll. But it's, you know, you start to see some of these locations factors into your thoughts as with the Albany stop that we had. Is there retail around? Is it gonna be people who are local trying to get their top ups? Maybe they're 
apartment dwellers who need that range for the week. Probably shouldn't really be in our minds, you know, what we need to do is get enough charging infrastructure in place that we have the options that are right for travel, local use, retail use, all the things that uh, people might want to do, have the right installations in the right places. At the moment, it's like if there's a charger there, I'm going to use it and that's perfectly fine. But, uh, you know, we're going to have to plan our trips for the next uh, 12 to 18 months at least around where the locations are and maybe we stop outside of the towns, even if it's a few minutes extra on the trip because you know you'll get on a station right away. In any case, the most we had to wait here was uh, just under 10 minutes. So no big deal, but uh, something to bear in mind as more EVs hit the road and as charging stations begin to get a bit more stretched in terms of the stalls and throughput. The route here, uh, it's a continually interesting route to take. We uh, we have two choices, really, when we go to Cleveland, essentially, if you want the uh, fastest route, per se. Uh, it's either I-90, New York Thruway, predominantly, uh, through New York, down through a little sliver of Pennsylvania and then northeast Ohio along the uh, Lake Erie shore, or you can go cut down a little deeper, go through Pennsylvania on I-80, which doesn't have tolls, but is much less populated, you know, the, across the New York Thruway route, as well as the uh, Massachusetts and uh, Pennsylvania towns. You also have a lot of cities in uh, New York upstate. So there's Albany, Syracuse, Rochester, then Buffalo, all of which have decent charging options. Plus in between, you've got a bunch of them like uh, the Fredonia site, the Waterloo, Electrify America. There's a bunch of these towns along there that have backup to your backup. So really good route. Um, seems crazy to say that. You know, if we talked about four or five years ago, we were looking at 300, 400 miles with no fast charging and a really difficult route to do as we've seen in other trips in the Bolt. But uh, this time, you know, this case, it's uh, it's looking really good and they keep on adding more and more. As we saw when we pulled off for uh, not a charging stop, but a quick uh, bio break at the Chittenango service plaza, really just before Syracuse actually so it would have been a great place to charge if we uh, had them online but these have the uh, some of the new throughway renovations and uh, the site itself is actually open but the charges aren't online yet so we're looking at uh, early to mid 2023 hopefully for those looks like at a lot of these places and the uh, new york throughway service plazas they do actually have the units in the ground the website says uh, i think two or three charges but it did look like there were four units there which would make more sense i think four is the kind of minimum we're looking at now and certainly an improvement on the one or two stations that we've got both on the Mass Pike and the New York Thruway at the moment. Again, nice addition to the um, infrastructure there and that route just continues to get better and better. So as it turns out, it wasn't uh, something we could use as the full cold weather trip that I've been wanting to do, certainly no snow. We did have pretty heavy winds on the way down just after Buffalo in that final section down to Ohio. Uh, and that did really hit the range uh, down to the point where we're getting like two miles per kilowatt hour, which was a bit brutal. But over the course of the whole trip, generally pretty dry, not uh, too bad conditions, and the uh, weather wasn't something we had to take into account. But on the way back, as we uh, entered the final couple of hundred miles, we did get a chance to see in below uh, freezing conditions, after a fast charge, just how quickly the weather takes its toll, or the temperature takes its toll on the battery pack and what the insulation is like. So, so this isn't intended as a deep dive into the various uh, parameters of where the pack is and when it's going to ramp. This was more overall observations on uh, the how quickly the pack cooled. So we're using the battery average here. It's more likely to use the uh, maximum and minimums in terms of uh, controlling what the pack does and how much power it requests from the charger. But for the sake of this, this was just a kind of observational log, some of the data. And in doing that, we had something like 250 miles to get back to Boston. So in the cold and with the hills of the boxes, that wasn't gonna happen. So we needed that final charge in Chicopee, but it did give us a chance to look at uh, driving from her on a hot pack, uh, how long it took over the various time. Now bear in mind, as we kind of got into Massachusetts, you're heading up into the hills, so there's an elevation change. It was also going from kind of dusk to pure night so you got no heating there either so there's quite a rapid change in general an hour of driving down to 61 degrees uh, after an hour and a half down to 54 degrees and after the two hours and 120 miles or so that it was to Chicopee we were down to 50 degrees Fahrenheit so you can see that rapid change whether it's because of the uh, nighttime falling or the elevation whatever it was the pack going pretty quickly down we had some regen um, down into the uh, Chicopee side did 
little bit of uh, accelerate up and then regen back to uh, see if that would influence the warming the pack at all. Um, didn't have a lot of effect. You probably need to do that a lot more. But the point being here that you're not anywhere near that 70 degrees, you know, you've kind of passed that mark um, after about 45 minutes of driving. Um, and most people are going to want to drive at least an hour after fast charging to get some distance. Maybe they want to drive a couple of hours. And if you're doing that in freezing temperatures, you're not going to be able to keep the pack warm just by driving at high speed alone. It's going to need some kind of assistance from the battery heater, which in this earlier model of the 2022 Ionic 5, we don't have yet. I think it's around June that the deliveries started happening of the 2022 models, at least in the States, with uh, the preconditioning shipping with the car. So that's when you're en route to a fast charger like a Tesla. You can um, pl plug in the destination into the car's native navigation, and it's going to tell it that it needs to start warming the pack. There's various criteria for that, none of which we can test because we don't have it. But you can see videos from Europe on people using that. And the main point being that you're going to then hit the charger with a pack that is more in that 70 degree range. You know, it's not enough to just have it warmed up from a previous charge and expect it to stay there. And it's going to be cold again by the time you hit that second charger if you're talking about more than uh, a couple of hours of driving here. It's uh, once you plug in, so then it battery heater needs to go to work. Uh, it's not accepting that full power for a good 10, 15 minutes. And that's kind of the time that uh, Hyundai is claiming for the 10 to 80%, more or less 18 minutes in optimal conditions. So it takes that 10, 15 minute period to really ramp up and by that point you may be at 50 60 percent state of charge and it's not going to accept that higher power that the kind of 240 kilowatt level that uh, the egmp platform can take and that's still a good rate it's still not like this is a dog of a charger but for the people who have come straight into an ionic 5 and are used to seeing that uh, 200 plus kilowatts over the course of the summer this is going to start to be something that drags on for stops if they're going on these longer trips so preconditioning will help that it's probably only a small subset of Ionic 5 owners now in the US and Canada that are having this problem but it's winter we are now there and this is going to continue until you know at least uh, March for some people and then those folks who are up in Minnesota and some of the other places are going to have it through to April and beyond so something to bear in mind and hopefully Hyundai gets that rollout and uh, we get the January expected update to uh, go to the dealer, get that battery preconditioning installed and we'll have some fresh tests for you in the new year. So I think that's a wrap in this one. It isn't lost on me, the fact that we're talking about doing, you know, 1,300 plus miles in uh, less than a weekend, really, leaving Friday, returning Sunday. And obviously it felt like a, you know, really quick trip and that was uh, not necessarily something you would always do, but it it is something you can do now and this was in you know colder weather in places where we're going to have to charge more frequently and still very doable you know we can make that journey in the kind of afternoon and early evening arrive in for a good night's sleep and then have you know what is essentially a full weekend uh, even in an electric vehicle and in winter and all the things that people start to throw at you you can't go far you can't do long journeys won't travel as quickly as gas all that kind of stuff so a good trip one again that i think puts electrify america in a you know reasonable light not uh, perfect by any means but certainly not this catastrophic mess that uh, some people seem to be seeing in certain areas i uh, just haven't seen that ourselves and it continues to be the case that we could leave uh, without planning a trip and there are plenty of charges plenty of places to go and the biggest factor that we're going to have to think of is is it going to be congested is this peak time are we in the middle of a city like albany and maybe we don't want to stop there maybe we want to stop somewhere along the throughway instead all of that stuff starting to come out, but that is not on Electrify America so much as the overall system of how many stalls do we need to have? How many other locations do we have maybe from other providers to go to if the Electrify America station is busy? All that kind of stuff, but nothing that really worried us too much on this trip. So a good one. Have you had any cold weather trips? Uh, how has the charging been? Are you seeing snow in your area and uh, the winter woes that some people like to claim? Interested in all any and all road trip experiences? is in as the months get colder here let us know down in the comments maybe you have uh, the preconditioning on your ionic 5 already and are loving it i hope to join you in the new year but uh, for now we'll be reporting on the cold weather trips from the early model perspective thanks again for watching and see you in the next one cheers